and welcome to Lingua Musica, where music is the universal language. I'm your host, Joe Kendrick, here in the heart of the Southern Appalachians at Moonlight Mile in front of a live studio audience. We're very excited to welcome Aaron Burdett and his band to the show tonight. He's just released his fifth album, Fruits of My Labor, and it's already getting a lot of critical acclaim, which is very well deserved. Very glad to have you, Aaron. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having us. So tell us about making the record. You've got the band dialed in. You've got a lot of guests on the record. You're with Organic Records now. That's right. We recorded the CD back late last spring. I did it with uh, my friend Chris Rosser in Asheville. He's got Hollow Reed Studios. And I recorded all five of my um, studio recordings there with him. I really like working with him. And uh, it's just a real comfortable atmosphere for me to work in. And we had... Um, my band at the time recorded, and then we did have a lot of regional guests, uh, Amanda Platt and uh, Casey Dreesen and Josh Goforth, and just people I've played with off and on over the past few years. So you used to be a lot more of a, a DIY kind of singer-songwriter, and, and now you're on organic. Tell us about that, that sort of evolution of, of you as an artist and your sound and, and working with a label. Well, where do you start out? You start out with a guy sitting in his bedroom with an acoustic guitar, you know, and um, you don't necessarily have a lot of resources at that point, and um, it's, you don't even really necessarily have a lot of skill at that point. Um, <clears throat> it takes a while to... I don't care how much talent you've got right off the bat. You, it just takes a lot of time to, to put together the skills it takes to do it. And, uh, you know... I. I guess as you as I got into the scene a little more, you meet people, you find people to play with. Um, well, you start being good enough that people want to play with you too. That's helpful. There's a different. It's a different experience uh, taking a song and building it yourself privately, and uh, then taking it into a studio and recording it, and then going out and playing it live, which is what happened early on. Um, now, more often than not, even if we're uh, just recording, just releasing something, we've been playing some of these songs live for a year. Um, it, it's a different experience. How long have you had your band now? These guys have been playing with me only about six months. Um, my, my band I've been playing with for years uh, had to go and have some babies in the last couple months. Yeah. Uh, right when the CD was released. Between the two of them, they had three babies. So <laughs> their availability is somewhat dinged up at the moment. <laughs> but I was fortunate enough to find these guys, and I really enjoyed it. I was thinking about the, the title track, Fruits of My Labor. It's one of the standouts on this. And the sort of worldview that you have on that, you've got a lot of, a lot of you know, it's kind of like a blues route. There's a lot of anguish, but it's kind of overcome. It winds up being a fairly upbeat tune. It's got, you know, this fairly anthemic sing-along quality to it. And how do you come about writing that, and is, do you have a favorite? Is that your favorite of the record? Well, um, I did decide just as it was coming out to call it, to, to, to have that as the title track. It, it seemed like it was, <clears throat> it seemed like it it, it stood out a little bit by that time. And uh, often I do that, like, you know, the CD's called something right up until the last minute when it's called something else. You know, my day job for quite a while has, uh, I have a construction business and have been a contractor, and it's been a grueling few years to be in that um, <clears throat> profession. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm slowly but surely transitioning out of that and into doing this full time. So it's easy for me to get in touch with those sort of frustrated blue-collar feelings that you hear in that song. But at the same time, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to have an imagination that sort of just paints a little bigger picture than, than my specific experience. I could hear that coming out of Nashville, that song. I mean, I mean that in a, in a very complimentary way. I, I could hear somebody picking that up. Yeah, well, that'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Get on that. <laughs> well, you you did have a, a song that was on this record that you that you remade. Yeah, uh, home to Carolina. That's right. And that won an award from Our State Magazine. Did that open up any doors for you? 
Well, sure. I mean, you know, just to uh, get some recognition in that in that magazine all over the the state and the country, for that matter, it was it was pretty cool. It seems to me the progression in this industry isn't like one for one perfectly linear. For example, that song was released on that 2005 album, uh, and I had all you know all but forgotten about it. You know, I mean, it, it, we play it, and we play it very differently now than it was recorded on that CD, and that's part of why we re-recorded it. Um, to put out uh, on their little sampler that we that we put out after it won that contest, but then I didn't have anywhere to <clears throat> we didn't have anywhere to get it, so we decided to put it on this so uh, people could have the new version. It, it was great working with with Our State Magazine, and I and I'm sure it's opened some doors that I haven't even seen yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit about what other artists that you look up to? Is there anybody that you'd like to work with? Oh, man, there's a ton of people I'd like to work with. <clears throat> I don't even know where to start with that. I think when I, when I listen a little bit to a song by a James McMurtry or, uh, or a John Hyatt or a, a Jason Isbell, or you get, even though, like I said, a lot of it's made up, you get from their language a little bit of their personality. I mean, I don't think it's... I don't, I'm not sure. I think it's very difficult to take you take yourself completely out of it. Um, so I don't know. I've just been drawn to all different kinds of people uh, and different ways of saying things and different ways of um, the, the people write their poetry. Like I remember, I spent a long uh, several years listening to a lot of Ricky Lee Jones because she just did these crazy things that that somehow spoke to me, but were pretty far out sometimes. You know, it was not the way I would say it. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I, I just find that interesting, and, and that's, I think that's the art of it. I think that's what, you know, I think that's what makes painters different. I think it's what makes, um, you know, if, if you really get into it, what make, makes guitar players different or piano players different. They can play the same song, but there's just a slight different inflection you get out of it. So you're saying that you enjoy a lot of music that's instrumental. Are you, like, riding into the gig and getting amped up listening to, what, Outkast or Big Boy or what? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I mean, uh, I listen to, uh, to, be, to be honest, perfectly honest, I listen to a lot of podcasts, I, um, a lot of, uh, I listen to a lot of uh, electronica and like uh, just uh, sort of background ambient music, and the, the sound, soundtrack type music where, uh, you know, the soundtrack of my life is a little bizarre. Yeah. It's always interesting to find out what, what people's musical taste is, and you'd, you'd think a lot of times from, from listening to an artist, it's like, well, that's what they listen to. And some artists don't ever listen to their own music. Well, I try not to listen to it very much. Um, <clears throat> I, mean, that's, I think the music we play now is the music I listened to 20 years ago and 15 years ago. Um, I, uh, I find if I listen too closely to the... Um, the, the styles that are too close to what I do, I, I get, uh, you compare and contrast, and you, I think about it too much. And um, I don't know, I would rather accidentally write a song very similar to somebody else's, because uh, that does happen. You know, you'll, you'll, write, you'll write something or pull up a melody, and you're like, oh, dang. And then you'll hear it on the radio, and you're like, man, <laughs> I had a good one going there. <laughs> <laughs> Some jerk had it two years ago. <laughs> I, I don't know. My, my musical tastes have changed a lot, and uh, the, the place where I listen to music is very different. I, I think um, I used to, in, in high school, I had a friend who used to like to fall asleep um, listening to the radio, and it drove me nuts because I listened to the changes, and I listened to the, I can't, I can't not hear it, and that's not relaxing to me. Um, I think that's part of the reason I listen to stuff that's so uh, different from what I play yeah. is because it, it, I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. I have a problem sometimes of just always being able to listen to music at just any hour all the time. Yeah. And it's kind of an addiction in a way. I, well, you're in the right business. I, I think so. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the environments that you listen to You know, outside of songwriting. You said you're in construction. Are you, are you uh, able to listen to any music there? Is it, is it something that you even want to hear? I, I'm imagining construction sites with the, the jam boxes going with, with uh, something that might not be your taste. Well, I tend to clamp down on that sort of thing. I, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, can't have that. 
<laughs> and, and honestly, you know, the, I haven't been doing that much construction over the last six months, and, and that, that's okay. I mean, um, this has been kind of taken off, and I've been able to pay a lot more attention to it, and uh, it's probably part of the reason I'm sitting here tonight. It's funny, when I was talking to Mickey and Ty over at Organic early on, Mickey was saying for a, uh, uh, for a region and an area here that has so much music and so much good original music, there's not very much, uh, he called it infrastructure, um, for that. Uh, and that's part of the reason I believe that, I don't want to speak for them, but I believe that's part of the reason that uh, they've decided to do this organic Americana label because um, <clears throat> there's not that many uh, publicists, radio promoters, um, you know, writing houses, publishers. There's just not that kind of stuff here, but there's plenty of talent and people that could, uh, that could benefit from that. AaronBurdett.com. The new record is Fruits of My Labor. It's on organic. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you, Joe. This is Lingua Musica, where music is the universal language. I'm your host, Joe Kendrick. Until next time. I'm a graveyard man working dust to dawn Thirteen years behind a sand and drum Six a.m. when my shift is done I'm out the side door squinting to the rising sun Cross the gravel to the pickup truck door won't latch unless you hold it up gotta let it run before you drive it but it's one thing i can always rely on one day the fruits of my labor one day the fruits of my shine on through I drive home to take the kids to school and help their mama with all she's got to do I don't know how she keeps us all together she's an angel with an attitude
Yeah. 
that happen when we wake or if we don't what's left behind but all the words that we spoke to our loved ones while we live while we breathe what kind of life was it what do we leave do we build something up do we tear something down the head starts to spin and the thoughts tumble down i take a long look back take a long look back we made something out of nothing we made something out of nothing yeah
feel bitter blue You still make me feel bitter blue Find your love Is there water in the well Cause I'm thirsty 